everybody. What is happening? It's Brent Dax, and we're live here on the Syracuse Orange Basketball Facebook page. Woo! Deep breaths. Exhale. What an ending. A frantic finish, but ultimately a close loss for the Syracuse Basketball Orange as they fall to Notre Dame at the Carrier Dome, 88-87. to The final score as Joe Girard hits a three-pointer at the end. Maybe could have been a foul. Maybe Joe flopped a little bit one way or the other. It doesn't get called, and Notre Dame ends up with a one-point victory, a frantic finish at the Dome, to say the least. So a lot to talk about with you. Let's jump in and do it. We're here thanks to our friends at Krause Health. You guys get in there and jump in the comments and do your thing. Happy New Year, everybody. We haven't been here for the past few games. Took some time off for the holidays and everything going on. Hope everybody had a terrific holiday season. But Boy, we, uh, we locked in on conference play today. Syracuse, of course, already had two conference games in the books before this, but kind of the start of ACC play in earnest as they've got 18 straight in the league. And today was a demonstration of a game that Syracuse has got to put in its back pocket and has got to win, considering that the ACC is down a little bit. It's a top-heavy league. A lot of those top-heavy wins that Syracuse has the potential to get won't come until February. They do have Virginia this month and a couple of teams that would look good on the resume. And the rest of the time, you got to take care of business. And this was that kind of game. But, man, what a terrific basketball game it was at the Carrier Dome. You're kind of, on one hand, like, oh, you got to win that one. But on the other hand, it was a great, great game to start off full-time ACC play for the Orange. Let's jump into a couple of stats here because there were plenty of things uh, to look at there, a balanced effort for Syracuse here uh, on the scoring front when you go through it. Buddy Beheim leads the way for Syracuse with 23 points. He was 7 of 12 from three-point range, doing exactly what you're going to need him to do consistently in conference play, hit three, score. Uh, didn't rebound that much today, only had two rebounds, but dished out four assists on the day. A terrific game for Buddy all around. Do not make Joe Girard angry. There was a technical foul called in the second half of this game. I forget the Notre Dame player off the top of my head, but he uh, Girard went down, and he stood over him, was talking some trash, got the taunting call, technical. Joe hits the free throws, hit a string of three-pointers and shots after that. He ends up with 20 points on the day, four of nine from three-point range. He was a perfect four of four uh, from the free-throw line. Joe continues to be one of the leading free-throw shooters in the country there. Marek Doljai, 13 points, 10 rebounds on the day, seven assists, that typical stat-stuffing day for Marek, who really started slow in this one but came around big time. Elijah Hughes, Missed a shot down the stretch that was big for Syracuse, but 19 points on the day for him. He dished out five assists as uh, he continues to lead this team in assists, believe it or not. You know, Joe's right there, and I think Marek Dolzhai is going to climb the list here. Syracuse, one of the – and Notre Dame, for that matter, one of the highest-rated teams in assist percentage in the country coming into this one. And you knew both teams were going to shoot a lot of threes. Both of those things uh, happened today. Quincy Garrier, one really encouraging sign for Syracuse was they got some strong interior play from Quincy Garrier, who played 17 minutes in this game. He ends up with 10 points and five rebounds, three blocks on the day. Just looked like he belonged out there and could contribute and could give Syracuse something, and he had to really help out with Barama Sidibe in foul trouble. Ends up with four fouls, leaves the game. Uh, Barama finished on the day, just two points. Uh, six rebounds on the day. All of those on the offensive end is foul trouble uh, really cost him in this one. So that's on the Syracuse side of things. Notre Dame, I mean, you knew John Mooney, one of the best big men in the country, was going to come in and have a big day, and that he did. 28 points for John Mooney, 11 of 21 inside, 14 rebounds right at his average, an average that leads the country, by the way. He also has more double-doubles than anybody in college basketball this year. Hub with 28 points on the day. He goes 6 of 12 from three-point range. Gibbs, TJ Gibbs, you knew, was going to come in, was going to shoot the rock. All six of his baskets were from three-point range. Six of eight, deadly, uh, from three-point range for Gibbs. He ends up with 21 points on the day. And it was really those three, because Notre Dame, 
lost Rex Fluger. He got injured, and the bench got really short for Mike Bray, who at one point was on the court, very emotional in this one. So it was Mooney, it was Hub, and it was Gibbs, and that was enough for Notre Dame. Now, there's a couple of, of stats overall we've got to look at here in this game as well. Uh, both teams made 31 shots, the Irish 31 of 69, Syracuse 31 of 64. So things close there. Both teams went 15 of 31 from three-point range. Dead even on that front. You knew both teams were going to shoot the three, and they were dead even in that. So where Notre Dame got an advantage is they won the rebounding battle 39-36, which is actually pretty good for Syracuse to be that close, considering the rebounding edge that Notre Dame had. Syracuse had the lead in rebounds for most of this game. There were two stats, though, where Notre Dame really pulled away. They got a bunch of points off turnovers. They beat Syracuse in that category 21-9. to Syracuse turned the ball over, uh, let's see here, 11 times. And Notre Dame got 21 points. Made Syracuse pay for every turnover big time. Uh, points in the paint were even, believe it or not, even with John Mooney's huge game inside. The big thing for Notre Dame was second chance points. 24-14 edge there. Jim Beheim just said it in his post-game press conference, a brief uh, post-game press conference for Beheim as uh, Syracuse couldn't get any stops down the stretch. And that's something that we're going to continue to see develop with this team. We'll see what kind of defensive team they become. You've got a smaller Joe Girard at the top of the zone to go with Buddy Beheim. I think Elijah Hughes is going to slide in at the two and maybe even at the one at times, depending on how rotations are going and everything to help out in that position, and you just knew that this is a Syracuse defensive team that's not quite there, but you got to make some stops, and they couldn't make any stops down the stretch. Those second chance points really piling up for the Irish. So let us uh, jump in and talk to you so we can get back and watch the Bills beat the Texans, right? Uh, Matt saying, besides the obvious lack of interior D, it appears the guards don't help either. We're just talking about the defense. The ball gets inside easy over Gerard, who lacks size. Once the ball gets to the foul line, the zone is in trouble. Even Niagara, if you go back to that game on the 28th, not the, one of the smallest teams in the country was managing to get the ball inside. It's just going to be a weakness for Syracuse this year. They don't have strong interior defense. Quincy Garrier, again, had a good game. Maybe he can help you out there. Uh, Barama can rebound, but defensively he got an earful from Beheim during a couple different timeouts on that front, got into foul trouble. Marek Doljai can only do so much inside, particularly against really good inside players like Mooney. So that's going to be a kind of a black hole for the Orange all season. They've got to figure out how to make some stops. This was a game where they could go at a pace with a team that they're even with and could score, and just whoever got the ball last was going to win this thing, and Notre Dame had the score. They didn't score at the end with the ball, but they had the ball as the game ended because Gerard hits the three. And, look, could they have made the call? If you really Zapruder film that replay, there was some contact there, but Joe totally flopped on that one. That's going to get more of the attention of the official. And Syracuse has to, as we mentioned, make some stops, and they've got to hit some of those shots down the stretch. And it, it just an insane game that went back and forth down the stretch. So I'm not going to blame this one on officials or fouls, but – you know, this is going to be a situation where there's some teams that are coming up in ACC play where you don't match up as evenly as you do with Notre Dame. This is a, a take care of business month for Syracuse. They get Notre Dame again on the 22nd. They get Virginia Tech, quick turnaround, 9 o'clock game on Tuesday night. I uh, hate those 9 o'clock games. But uh, we'll be here. We'll be here after that game. Every ACC game, we'll be here uh, doing the live chat here on Facebook. But you got Virginia Tech twice this month. You got Pittsburgh this month, Boston College. So there's not a lot of huge quad one opportunities there for Syracuse. Most of those come in February. You get Duke in February. You get Louisville in February. Florida State looked great today. I don't know if you watched them, but they look terrific. They look like one of the best teams in the league right now. North Carolina, who knows what kind of game that's going to be because they're off this year with Cole Anthony Hurt. But all the big, meaty games, for the most part, come in February. Syracuse's big opportunity this month is Virginia. And, I mean, Virginia's just going to be a tough go for Syracuse in Charlottesville no matter what. So you've got to bank some wins here. And having nine or ten wins in the ACC, that might not be good enough this year. They're going to look at who you beat in the league, not just one of those, you know, do not, you know, what's the old Monopoly expression? Just, you know, go right home. Do not, you know, pass go. Do not collect $200. Go, you know, just – I haven't played Monopoly in a while, but you know what I'm talking about. If you get ten wins, maybe even nine wins in the ACC, Syracuse got in the tournament 
with eight ACC wins a couple of years ago. That might not be the case this year. They're going to look at who you beat on top of what kind of league you're in. So it's these type of games. I know it's only one game into what is a 20-game ACC schedule. Syracuse has played three of those games. But the start of the 18-game run here, you got to bank these wins, especially if you show you can hang in games like this. So that's where it's it's going to sting for the Orange for sure. A lot of you guys are saying a lot of the same things. Janine, great game, but sad about the loss. Catherine likes the energy that Quincy's bringing to the table. He's coming around at exactly the time that Syracuse needs him to. Exactly the time. Because you got a bench that's banged up. Bryson Goodine broke his nose this week. Jesse Edwards isn't going to get much time in these games, but he's battling a bit of an ankle situation. Howard Washington Jr. did play a little bit in this one, but he's not 100%. They're going to medically redshirt Robert Braswell. That's not official yet, but once they get to the threshold, which I believe is nine games and they're approaching that for him, he did not play in this game. But I don't think uh, they're going to put him out there much longer considering the shin injury that he's, he's playing for. And Bayheim only plays six or seven guys as it is, but that bench is pretty short. So he's kind of forced to in this spot. So you're going to need big contributions from Quincy Geary off the bench because he's almost your only bench guy in a way at this point other than, than Howard Washington Jr., but different positions, different situations. Uh, Kim uh, notes, uh, miss a T on the coach. For being on the court, bad call on the ref. Yeah, Mike Bray was pulling a Buzz Williams. He was way out on the court. Didn't get the tee there. They did call the tee on the player that was taunting uh, Joe Girard when he was on the court. But Bray was fuming at that spot and probably uh, could have and, and should have got a tee in that spot. Uh, Jamie notes, I like the mix of bringing in Washington. He brings a calm to the game. That's exactly it, Jamie. I mean, I, I love what Joe Girard did in the second half. They woke him up a little bit, calm, poised, didn't punch back, didn't even talk back to the Notre Dame players that were jawing at him a little bit. Very composed for a freshman. And Joe's played a ton of basketball before this and was one of the all-time leading scorers in the history of New York State. You guys know the story of Joe Girard. But you know he's just been in a big spot since he was like seven years old. So he's got more composure and poise than your average freshman. And they needed it there. Um but when you need Howard Washington Jr. to come in to kind of spell him there, that's a great point. You need a veteran guy who can kind of calm things down, know how to distribute the ball. Having that, you know, available to Syracuse is big because there's going to be games where Joe is not shooting well. There's going to be games where teams are going to key in on him, and there's going to be games where, you know, he struggles on the defense event. So it's good that they have Washington to come in and, and kind of spell him there. Uh, Maddie says, missed the game. Sounds like it was a good one. Can you explain the situation that decided the game? So, Maddie, if you missed it, uh, I mean, a lot of situations decide the game. It was back and forth down the stretch. Notre Dame, you know, got up 88-84. Elijah Hughes. You know, missed a shot down the stretch, but then Joe Girard comes down, hits a three pointer. So that puts Syracuse up 88 to, or puts Notre Dame up, pardon me, 88 to 87. And there, there looked to be some contact. Is it one you can let go? Yes, it is, because they did. And what caught the attention of the refs a little bit more was Joe fell back. So it looked more of a flop than it did a call. Could they have – I mean, they, they call touch fouls all the time. But in that spot, you really got to make some contact to get the, the whistle from the ref. So everybody's expecting the call. It didn't come. Notre Dame inbounds the ball. Game over. So that's a lesson there. You can't assume anything with the officials. You have to play, play, play until you hear that whistle. And you look up, and it's a one-point loss just like that. So frantic situation at the end there, Maddie. But uh, Syracuse came up on the short end of that one. Uh, let's see, Suzanne saying, why was GMAC wearing Notre Dame colors on the sideline? Was he? I didn't notice that. I know that uh, he was a big Notre Dame fan growing up as a kid, and had he not been pursued as heavily by Syracuse as he was, he wanted to play at Notre Dame, but uh, I did not notice that. What's up with that? Uh, Martin saying, off topic, when Bayheim retires, can we bring Hop back? Uh, I don't know if Hop will want to come back, to be honest with you. He's got a great gig out there in Seattle. I know his dad is – going through some situations with dementia, and he's got some family out there. But he's got a great gig. He's coaching great out there. He's recruiting well out there. It's a great spot to live. Uh, John Wildhack has to make that phone call. I agree with you there, uh, Martin. But I don't know if you're going to get hot back. I mean, you make the call, you give it a shot, you back up the Brinks truck and see if he'll do it. But uh, I don't know if they're going to get him back at this point. 
Uh, Jay notes that Bray – I didn't see Bray grab the official. Yeah, if he grabbed the official, that should have been an automatic technical. I think you can get ejected for that as well. So, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda in that spot. Bottom line is Syracuse had to make stops and they had to make more shots down the stretch, even in an insane game that they played really well. Five guys in double figures. We brought up the key stats there for the Irish, but uh, those those little things add up like that, especially when you don't get those calls. So that's an interesting point uh, to make there. Uh, so I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, I think we're going to end it a little early tonight. Uh, I, 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 I love you guys. I do, but I'm a little distracted because my bills are on right now, so I, I got to get back to that game and see what's happening there. But uh, really appreciate you coming by, as always. We'll be here throughout ACC season after every game here on the Syracuse Orange Basketball Facebook page. Next one is Tuesday night. It's a 9 o'clock tip against Virginia Tech. So as soon as that one's over and Jim Beheim's press conference is over, which we run here on the channel, uh, we'll pop on and talk about that one. So that's when we'll meet again. Thanks for coming by for this live chat. Always appreciate it. Happy New Year to everybody. Looking forward to talking hoops with you throughout the ACC slate. But for this one, Syracuse falls to Notre Dame. 88 to 87. Thanks to our friends at Krause Health. Thanks to you guys. We'll talk to you again Tuesday night.